Now I want to talk about cardiac anatomy from um, an electrophysiological perspective, and this is on page 7 of your cardiac dysrhythmia interpretation workbook. So when we look at the heart from an anatomical perspective, we're really looking at a four-chambered, two-sided pump. So we're talking about um, you know, the right side here, which receives deoxygenated blood and sends it a very short distance to the lungs where it picks up oxygen and returns it um, to the left side of the heart, now oxygenated, and uh, then it gets pumped to the rest of the body. So we're really looking at right side of the heart pumping it to the lungs, left side of the heart pumping it to the rest of the body. If you'll recall from the last presentation, uh, I mentioned that there are these fibrous connective tissue rings that support the AV valves and the pulmonic and aortic valves. And what these um, rings do essentially is isolate the ventricles, or the atria rather, from the ventricles. So the only link, this is the essay note here, uh, between the atria and the ventricles is this AV node and the bundle of Hiss, which then bifurcates into the right and left bundle branches. So these fibrous connective tissue rings sometimes uh, some people refer to them as the skeletal system of the heart. They support the, the valves, but they isolate the atria from the ventricles. So this is why, from an electrophysiological perspective, we look at the heart this way. Instead of looking at it as a, uh, a two-sided pump, right side and left side, we look at it as a, uh, an organ where we're looking at upper chambers and lower chambers. So we're looking essentially for atrial activity in the form of a P wave, we're looking for ventricular activity in the form of a QRS, and are the atria and the ventricles working in sync with one another? In other words, is there a P wave representing electrical current in the atria coupled with uh, a QRS which represents electrical activity in the ventricles?